Hi everyone! So, in the previous video we looked at the Naphtamide Maroon by Daniel Smith and we've done a few tests, the transparency, dispersion, glazing, granulation and darkest to lightest. So if you want to have a look, um, I highly advise you check that video out, which I'll link here. Okay, so let's have some fun now. And Naphtamide Maroon, beautiful color, what can I say? So. Um, let's see how this color behaves with other colors. Now, I really should have a mixing paper, which I didn't prepare, so I'll get it quickly. By mixing paper, I just mean these tear off palettes, and they are fantastic for when you don't have this color. Like in my case, I don't have this color in the palette. So if I start mixing it with other colors, I will create mixes that I don't have a color of it in here, which I don't want to. If, if that's something you're good with, then you can do it. And equally, there is not enough space in this little um, palette, which I'm using my own palette here, um, to do that with. So easiest thing I find is to use the tear off palette, which I'll link for you in case you're new to it or don't know where to get them. So what I tend to do is just kind of tear it and then I can use it uh, in like other situations but I find a smaller palette like this is a lot easier. Basically it's a paper that has this coating on one side and it sort of makes the um, color beat up on it rather than go through. So you can use it as a palette basically. Hence why it's called a tear off palette. Okay, so I think I might need a little bit more of this naphtamide maroon. So I'm just going to add a little touch more. Okay, so naphtamide maroon, beautiful on its own, but let's see what happens if you use it with other colors. So here we have, where's my card? So this one was Nickel Asia Yellow. And I'm just going to mix it actually a little bit on the paper here and then go in with the naphtamide maroon and see what we get in the middle. Actually, that is a nice color. Yeah, that's, it's sort of like a, it's interesting, it's kind of like a brown, but the nickel azo is coming through quite nicely, so it makes it glow. Look at that, how invasive um, Naphtamide Maroon is, it's just tra started traveling and taking over the yellow, which is what we saw in this um, test that we did with the dispersion how it moves very quickly so if you're going to use it with other colors i would assume that um it's going to be the more dominant color even in this case where usually the nicolazo yellow is quite dominant itself but it's taking over okay so what else orange let's try this super bright orange that i have here which is transparent orange by Schmincke. It's very clean, it's very bright, it's beautiful, but I find that a little bit of mixing is really required with this color to get it to an interesting mix. Okay, so let's see what will happen here. Wow, it just shoots through these colors, really. Okay, not a nice natural color. Look how it just completely took over here. Okay, I'm just going to leave it as it is. Not do much about it, but basically just to remind ourselves what this was. It was this orange here. I'll try actually just something else just on the side right here. Because I'm using a little bit too much water, so I'm just going to try lift that and go all the way here so that we have as much of the orange as possible and just dip naphtamide maroon 
right at the edge of it. I'm just I just really want to see how far it can travel. Okay, so here we go. Look at that. And it's still going. Wow. <laughs> okay. Next one. What shall we do with the next one? Actually, red. I'd like to see what it looks like with red. So this is the Paraline Scarlet by Daniel Smith. So like I said before um, in the other video, or have I? I'm not sure. Um, there are links in the description which you can have a look at and if you're interested in all these colors and would like to add them to your palette or create a similar palette then you can do that it's just a little bit too much water so it's going to shoot through again look at that I'm just going to mix it here um, then you can check out those links otherwise I can try and link this palette here in the card up here somewhere there for you so this is going to be quite interesting because what we are experiencing right now is that naphthoid maroon is so strong that it is very very difficult to use it with other colors because it just takes over having said that I think what might help is using minimal water because when there is a puddle of water it just shoots through it. So let's try and somehow create a drier mix. I'm going to do the same with this red. And I'm going to maybe even wait a little bit longer for it to dry. Meanwhile I'm just going to add So it's sort of now drying up a little bit. There's less water in there. Let's see what happens. I mean, it even pushes the water that was sitting here in the middle. It pushed it all the way to the side. Very interesting. And it doesn't keep its um, strength because of the movement. It just goes through there. All right, so I think these are pretty obvious. Let's try with something a bit different, which is Shell Pink. And this Shell Pink is by Mission Gold, and it's a very milky color. Now let's see how it behaves with this. As it's not transparent, it'd be good to see what happens with it. Whether it's going to mix at all. So, let's see okay well it's still invasive <laughs> that's safe to say um, I'm going to try and mix the two over here see what happens so that's quite a nice color So it's a milky naphthamide maroon. And then let's see, let's move into something different. So this one here, lavender, that would be interesting. Now lavender is also a little bit milky and that's why I keep them two together. Sort of similar composition. And then let's go into Naphthamide Maroon. I'm going to first dab it here and then just touch it ever so slightly. Okay, so here I didn't want to do that, interestingly enough. So here it's not mixing nicely at all, so that has something to do with this color because you can see it wants to move but it just sort of struggles a little bit 
it is moving definitely started now spreading but it had a bit of a time to do that uh, I don't think I'm gonna mix it together it just doesn't look like a great mix but anyway let's go ahead and do that so that's this and then pick up a little bit of this naphthamide maroon yeah it just doesn't mix into a nice color at all so I'm just gonna do that next to it here kind of feels like a heavy mix to do I'm just going to remind myself what this was and now there are a couple of colors which I'm quite interested in. actually this here is cobalt blue violet so it's an interesting color that separates into different colors and I want to see what happens when we introduce the two together because it is one of those that is quite interesting on its own so let's see so you can see at this end where nothing is left of the color it's not that great just going to deepen it up a little bit and then mix the two colors together so it's quite a moody violet color which is quite pretty and then just in case it takes over completely of this purple and we're not going to see anything I'm going to add this here right okay so next thing greens greens is what I wanted to see what happens because I can imagine that a bunch of these greens actually before we move into green there's ultramarine turquoise now that would be interesting to see what happens because it's such a bright stunning color so them two together should create a great uh, neutral gray I would assume so let's try it over here okay and so we could add more of the naphthamide maroon yes so now oh look at this that's beautiful that's a very interesting gray beautiful color so them two look amazing together and then let's try greens that I wouldn't normally put together with the naphthamide maroon but I just really want to see what they're going to behave like and so this one is done I'll just use the new one um, let's see so we have a bit of this naphthamide maroon there you go that's going to be too much probably so this color has a bit of that white and see what happens now it's quite interesting so I'm just going to go back in what green is that that's spring green by Daniel Smith yeah I can see that there is definitely oh no that does not look good so it has some sort of white pigment in there that although having said that look at this that's pretty interesting quite unusual what it looks like um, so some of the times it's better to mix them together somewhere on the palette and then put it on paper like in this case and then there is other cases where it's the reverse it looks a lot interest a lot more interesting like this uh, it almost does look like watercolor so there's some sort of separation happened here which is pretty stunning okay so another color I want to try is leaf green now this is going to have something white as well in there so I'm expecting similar action and then I'm going to put 
strong mix here. Oh, that's beautiful. Look at that. Just keeps going. The combination here is pretty nice. Uh, I wouldn't imagine mixing them would be a great color, but let's try that as well. Okay. I mean, it could be useful. It's just taken over completely now, but it was quite pretty before it's done that. And then finally, what I would do is actually look at like, uh, what color is that? Parallel green, that's it. That would look quite nice with parallel green, I would imagine. So let's try it. So there's parallel green. Perylene green has that deepness and intensity of naphthamide um, maroon. Now my perylene green is from Schminke in this palette. So it's gone. <laughs> Okay, so I'm just going to, you can't really see it here, I'm sorry. What I'm doing is just, what I'm trying to do is pick up of that um, naphthamide maroon and mix it on my paper or with the parallel green to see if I can create a similar look to the ultramarine turquoise. Yeah. It is actually quite similar, more of a black actually. Yes, it's more of a black than this beautiful gray. So if I needed to create a neutral gray or uh, black, then that's a mix here. And then the final one I wanna try is Mars Black by Schminke. Mars Black is a granulating black, which is quite interesting. Um, so I just want to see what will happen if we combine it. With the naphthamide maroon. So let's just see. And there's a little bit of space here. So what I want to do is actually mix it up on my palette first with the black Mars or Mars black rather and then swatch it out in this little corner that I have some space left see what happens does it granulate does it not so you can see here the granulation started and I just wanted to see if it's going to do the same here but otherwise, it's really, really interesting. So I'm going to go ahead, dry them thoroughly and come back and we will look at the colors in a little bit more depth. Okay, so let's look at the colors now. Um, so what I would say is, to me personally, I found it's a great color to deepen other colors. So if you have any reds or pinks that you might want to do it with, it would be nice to kind of make them a little bit more neutral and dull them down in a way. If you wanted to have a little play, then I would recommend to go with some more unique colors, like for example this one, which was uh, the Cobalt Blue Violet. So the Cobalt Blue Violet on its own is very interesting. Combined with any color, um, usually, it will be an interesting mix. So use it with some colors that have this color separation and that might add an extra bit of depth to it as well. Then um, we have learned today that it makes a beautiful gray and it makes a beautiful neutral black. So the black was with perylene green and the, so here is perylene green on its own, this color right here. And then with the ultramarine turquoise 
we got this beautiful gray so it neutralized it completely uh, into this stunning gray otherwise things like this was quite interesting and very surprising what we got here so if you're more into experimenting with your watercolors and you want something a little bit out there which is quite unique I would not have thought that we would get this interesting look here by using these two colors so one is the spring green by Daniel Smith and the one next to it is the leaf green by and I think this was Mission Gold yeah Magello watercolor so very interesting mixes better to do it on paper for these um, unique kind of effects because if you mix them on a palette and apply them to paper they look pretty dull but if you do something like what we've done here it's actually very very interesting I will try to repeat this in my illustrations for sure um, this is why it's quite useful to have a play like this with your watercolors especially if you get one um, like a new color that you haven't experimented with before or even if you go into a color that you like using and you have been using for years but you never played around because you need to learn what it can do and this is the best way just take a regular palette that you're using and go through some of the colors and see what happens so at the bottom here we have the final one which is Mars Black this particular one is my Schminke watercolor now I've done a video before, which I'll try to put here in the card, where we have looked at the Mars Black and all the mixes it can do. Actually, let me just get it quickly. So this is what we did in that video. If you want to have it, uh, have a look at it. We looked at Mars Black and what it can do. And the reason why it's called Mars Black is because it creates that, like a planet texture. And um, it's very interesting. Here I have used blues and a um, couple of the greens to see what mixes you can get but pretty much um, you know you can use Mars Black with any color in your palette and what will happen is you'll keep the color of the um, uh, pigment however you will also add Mars Black so it works beautifully with every single color that you can think of it will grade a little bit um, it will create like a more kind of gray tone to it, but create that beautiful texture of it as well. And that's exactly what happened here. So mixing it on paper, not much excitement, but um, there you can see what has happened in this swatch. And I actually quite like this orange combo here. It looks so much like vibrant and so interesting, similar to these two colors here. Something quite unique, I feel. So I hope this was um, useful for you and will encourage you to play with your colors, but I absolutely love the uh, Naphthamide Maroon and now even more since I discovered what it actually can do. Um, so yeah, thanks for watching and see you soon.